This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 465. How to Keep Your Kids Debt-Free Forever, part two, by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. Hey, OLD friend, I'm Joss Marie, and welcome back to my show. This is the podcast where I narrate all things relationship-based, including parenting-related content. And I'll actually be covering part two of a post from Kaylin Bruce today. So if you're new here, you'll probably want to check out yesterday's episode first to hear part one. That's episode 464. But if you're here for part two, then let's get right back into it and continue optimizing your life. How to Keep Your Kids Debt-Free Forever, part two, by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. A continuation from part one on how to get a debt-free degree. Number three, apply for scholarships. If your child chooses not to work or not to save for college, they can at least apply for scholarships. This can be a full-time job. It's best to set a goal, like two a day. If your child applies for two scholarships a day for their entire senior year of high school, even just three to five days a week, they'll not only get better at writing papers, but they'll see a nice return on investment. Investing time, receiving money. Number four, work through college. Finally, if your child doesn't have savings for school and they don't have enough scholarships to cover the cost, it won't hurt them to work their way through college. The benefit to working through college is actually threefold. One, working while in college tends to keep kids away from an unproductive party life. Two, students who work through school tend to put more energy into their studies. And three, Students who work part-time, not full-time, have better grades, according to multiple studies. And number five, join the military. Obviously, this option isn't for everyone, but between military tuition assistance and the GI Bill, you can have an entire degree paid for by the U.S. military. You'd be surprised how many people join purely for the education benefits. It turns out that everyone has student loans is another myth. And just because most people may have them, that doesn't mean your child has to. It's actually easy to get a debt-free degree, much easier than a lifetime of student loan payments. Your child, three. Student loan debt, zero. How to never have a mortgage. Mortgages are like car payments, but it's much more understanding that you would need a loan for something that costs six figures. That still doesn't mean anyone needs a mortgage. It's highly possible to buy a house without one. It seems like, as part of the American dream, we're encouraged to buy a house when we first start our life. We supposedly need our own home. We hear things like, renting is throwing money away, and you need to buy your own home for your family's sake. Both statements are false. Renting is a necessary part of progressing through adulthood, and at no point do you ever need to buy a home. I'm not saying you or your children shouldn't buy a home. At some point, it's nice to have a home that belongs to you, that you can do whatever you want with, and that you don't owe someone else money for. But that doesn't have to take 30 years. If you have to finance something, that means you can't afford it. Take that mentality into home ownership, and it doesn't seem like anyone can afford much. Here's the secret. You can't. Not when you're first starting out. That's why it's called a starter home. It shouldn't be much of a home. Not yet. The trade-up approach to home buying. If your child starts saving for his first home as soon as he moves out, he can have enough to buy a small starter home in about 10 years. That means renting as inexpensively as possible for 10 years to pay 100% cash and zero interest for his first home. Mortgages cost more than we think. They often end up costing people two to three times the price of the home over the mortgage term. It's perfectly fine for your kids to start with a small home that they can actually afford. If your child refuses to go debt-free with their first home, encourage a maximum of 15 years on their mortgage. Listen to the difference. A standard $150,000 home on a 30-year fixed 3.9% interest rate, the standard rate at the time of this post, comes out to $104,700 in interest paid over the life of the loan. The same loan with a 15-year fixed 3.6% interest rate, the standard rate at the time of this post, FYI, shorter loans have lower interest rates, comes out to $44,346 paid over the life of the loan. That's $60,354 less in interest, and you're not even making double-sized payments. The payment for that 30-year loan would be around $1,050, while the payment for a 15-year loan is $1,425. That's less than a $400 a month difference to save over $60,000 and 15 years. If there must be a loan, make it short. But there doesn't have to be a loan. 
Once your child buys her first starter home, makes some improvements, and sells for profit, she can buy a nicer home, assuming she continued saving for her second home. As long as she gets a good deal, remember that money is made on the buy in real estate, not the sell. She can keep trading up until she gets that dream home. Your child, four, mortgage debt, zero. Do you really need a credit score? All of this debt-free talk always leads to the, but what about my kid's credit score question? And the answer is, they don't need one. My credit score is high, but I never use it. It's kind of a waste, really. If I would have known that I didn't need one, I wouldn't have tried so hard to make it so high. A credit score is really just a debt score. You can see that by seeing how your FICO score is made up. If your child never gets into debt, they will never need a credit score, period. In preparation for this article, I did some Googling to find out why people think you need a credit score. U.S. News gave five reasons, and none of them are valid reasons to live a debt-full life just to get a credit score. Here they are. Number one, renting an apartment. Number two, buying a home. Number three, refinancing student loans. Number four, getting a credit card. And number five, getting your next job. The balance gave five reasons as well. As a side note, I do appreciate that the balance also wrote an article on living without debt and without a FICO score. Their reasons were similar, but they added having a low car payment, funding a small business, and utilities. Basically, those are eight different things that supposedly warrant a credit score. Let's address each one of these. Number one, you don't need credit to rent an apartment or get your next job. You simply need references. Moreover, if you explain your debt-free lifestyle, that will typically intrigue the apartment manager or employer and often set you apart from the competition. Number two, if you don't use debt to finance your home, your degree, your business, or your car, you won't need a credit score. You'll just need actual money. Number three, the only thing that may change when it comes to your utilities if you don't have a credit score is that you'll have to pay a deposit, which you will get back because it's a deposit. And number four, I'm not going to address the credit card point. I think you get the idea. If you can find one small thing that does require a credit score, I promise you it's not worth it. Even if your child does decide to take out a mortgage, he can use manual underwriting to prove his ability to pay back the money. While having low credit can affect your children in things like job searching, utility payments, and business ownership, having no credit doesn't affect them in the same way. Having no credit often sparks curiosity in employers, and I've actually heard of people being called back in for a second interview because the employer was so curious about the applicant having no credit and no debt. In the case I'm referring to, the person actually got the job partially because of the conversation on being debt-free. His boss felt it showed a sense of responsibility, because it does. Your child, five. Credit score, zero. Literally. Debt-free for life. Your kids can win the debt fight, five to zero. Those are the five main areas that debt creeps into people's lives. Credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, student loans, and the need for a credit score. I'm not going to mention things like payday loans or any other short-term personal loans. I don't think I have to. Even debt lovers and credit score chasers alike tend to know how stupid those types of loans are. It would have been nice to know about all of this before I got my first credit card. I grew up thinking debt was just part of life, like most people think. This is a pretty radical way to live, and a lot of people scoff at it. It's hard to shift a paradigm that's so deeply woven into our culture. You can, however, raise your child to live a debt-free life. They never have to go into debt. They can truly live a free life that most people will never get to experience. As I always say, if we can teach our children financial literacy now, we won't be showing them how to dig their way out of debt later. You just listened to part two of the post titled, how to Keep Your Kids Debt-Free Forever by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com With all the things we already have to worry about as parents, isn't it nice to know that we have a choice to help our kids live debt-free lives? Living with debt has become so commonplace in our culture that it's actually become radical to consider not having a credit score or credit card. When it comes to big purchases like mortgages and cars, make sure you understand how much you'll be paying in interest over the long term so that you can impart this knowledge to your own children. And weighing the pros and cons to big decisions, such as whether to rent or buy, will help your kids see the bigger picture. Just because almost everyone carries some form of debt doesn't mean it's right or the only option for your kids. And real quick before we go, I'd just like to mention that we're almost in the final week already of our second group challenge at Old Podcast. This month's challenge was on tracking expenses. 
it's pretty amazing to see what your spending habits are when you track every single dollar that's going out. And to take part in future challenges, you can sign up to the mailing list right at oldpodcast.com. But with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up and get out of here. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and perhaps you'll even get a chance to teach the concept of debt-free living to your kids. As the saying goes, a dollar saved is a dollar earned. I'll see you again next week on Monday, where your optimal life awaits.